There are a variety of reactions that are used to synthesize amino acids, but arguably the most important, and it's actually a very old reaction, is what's called the Strecker synthesis. And the Strecker synthesis is a two-step process. So in the first reaction, you react an aldehyde with ammonia and HCN, put those things together, and they undergo a three-component reaction to give an amino nitrile. So, okay, so where you have a carbon that contains both an NH2 and a CN group. And then in a second reaction, this nitrile undergoes hydrolysis under acidic conditions to turn the C triple bond N into a carboxylic acid and give you the amino acid that you desire. So this, as I said, is very old chemistry. It was actually originally reported by Strecker in 1850, but there are many modern variations. One of the research groups that I used to work in, there were people working on carrying out modern versions of the Strecker reaction including what are called catalytic asymmetric reactions in order to produce enantiomerically pure amino acids. If you do this reaction under classical conditions, the starting materials that you have are achiral, so you will get a racemic mixture of enantiomers of the amino acid product. But if you add a chiral catalyst, specifically a chiral Lewis acid catalyst, to the reaction number one, you can synthesize the amino nitrile enantioselectively. In other words, only make one enantiomer, which is what you would want if you were making naturally occurring amino acids. So the Strecker synthesis can be used to synthesize either natural or unnatural amino acids. Simply, the side chain on the amino acid product is the same as the R group that you use on the starting aldehyde. So usually if you want a naturally occurring amino acid, unless you want the opposite enantiomer from what is produced in nature, it is generally easiest to isolate it from a natural source. But anytime you want to make an unnatural amino acid, of which there are many reasons to want to do that, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, the Strecker reaction would be a good reaction to use to do it. Okay, so an ex actual example of this reaction would be the synthesis of alanine. So in this case, we would start with acetaldehyde, two carbon aldehyde with a methyl group as the R group. And then again, two reactions. The first one, I have some slightly different conditions here. I'll get into this in more detail in the next slide. But ammonia, some amount of ammonium chloride, just so that you have both of these present at equilibrium. And then TMSCN is sometimes used as a more modern cyanide source rather than HCN. And then in the second reaction, of course, um, aqueous acid, and that will give you the amino acid. And of course, in this case, I drew the amino acid product in its proper Zwitter ionic form. Okay, let's look at some of the details of the first reaction. This is not a detailed mechanism, it's just kind of an overview of how this reaction works. So the aldehyde is initially going to react with ammonia to give an imine. Um, it's actually probably a mixture of the imine and the iminium ion, especially if you do this under slightly acidic conditions, which you would normally do to form an imine. The ammonium chloride that I talked about in the previous reaction is simply the conjugate acid of ammonia, and as long as you have some of that present, the reaction will take place at the proper pH to favor imine formation. Now, imines derived from ammonia tend to be too unstable to isolate, so we need to include the nucleophile that's going to come in and attack the imine, namely cyanide, in the same reaction pot. Okay, so this second reaction of the aminium ion, that's gonna be more reactive than the neutral imine, with cyanide is similar to cyanohydrin formation, which we also studied previously. That's simply the attack of cyanide on an aldehyde or a ketone. So note that at least under the pH 
slightly acidic pH that you would typically carry out these reactions, HCN, CN minus, the imine and the aminium ion are probably all present in some sort of complex equilibrium. And the key is if you were to write a detailed mechanism, you would be able to access whichever intermediate you need in a particular step of the mechanism. Okay, and then also, as I said previously, rather than HCN, reactions today typically use trimethyl silyl cyanide. That's what TMSCN is. It's just a slightly more user friendly version of cyanide, a little less toxic. And Lewis acids are sometimes used as catalysts. Under the initial reaction conditions, I added some ammonium chloride, which is a Bronsted acid catalyst. But we also sometimes are going to use Lewis acid catalysts, and that will specifically activate the aldehyde drive imine formation, as well as, in that case, you're probably not going to get an aminium ion, but you will get an imine that can complex with a Lewis acid and render the carbon more susceptible to nucleophilic attack by cyanide. But the upshot of this reaction is no matter exactly what reaction conditions you use, you end up with the amino nitrile. That is an isoluble compound, so you finish your work there. And then you come back another day and do reaction two, and that is the hydrolysis of this nitrile under acidic conditions to yield the carboxylic acid. Okay, so the fact that nitriles can undergo this hydrolysis is why they are considered to be carboxylic acid derivatives. We did not have time to consider this reaction in detail in the unit on carboxylic acid derivatives, but we are going to consider it now. So the first step is the conversion of the nitrile to an amide according to the mechanism below. So what is formally happening is that we are adding water to one of the CN pi bonds. Okay, we haven't added anything to triple bonds before, but as you can imagine, the carbon is the electrophilic partner in this bond and the nitrogen is, has the partial minus charge on it. So you can add nucleophiles to CN triple bonds just like you can add them to CN double bonds or CO double bonds. However, if we are doing the reaction under acidic conditions, the first step is going to be protonation of the nitrile to make it a better electrophile. So that's going to be step one, and then water comes in as a nucleophile in step two, and we break one of the CN pi bonds, putting the electrons onto the nitrogen. At this point, we need to transfer a proton from oxygen to nitrogen. We're actually going to have to remove both of the protons from the oxygen that came in as water, because if we're gonna end up with an amide at the end of this, it of course is not gonna have any hydrogens on it. So this mechanism, which is from the book, does this proton transfer intermolecularly. So first you remove a hydrogen with water and make H3O plus, and then H3O plus will donate that proton over to the nitrogen. You could just as easily do that proton transfer intramolecularly directly from the oxygen to the nitrogen. Okay, so once you get there, you have an iminium ion that has an OH bound to the carbon, and then there is another resonance structure available in which we have a CO pi bond, so CO double bond, and a CN single bond. This is now starting to look more like an amide. This, this type of equilibrium was also, well, the, in this case, these are resonance structures. We, we also saw a similar phenomenon when we were studying enamine formation. And then the final step now is that we remove the hydrogen from the oxygen in order to yield a neutral amide. Okay, so first the nitrile gets converted into an amide, but then under the same conditions of this reaction, namely that you're heating it in the presence of aqueous acid, the amide is hydrolyzed to the carboxylic acid by a mechanism that we did cover previously in the context of the unit of carboxylic acid derivatives, the hydrolysis of amides 
to carboxylic acids under acidic conditions. So that's the Strecker reaction. Again, there are research groups still using this. It is used extensively for the synthesis of amino acids today, but I just wanted to give you an overview of how the reaction works and what it does.